Hello and welcome to game 10 of the 15th season TCC Super Final. Lila is with white, Starquish with black, and Lila played such a beautiful Benoni. As we'll see, her play seems so effortless and so logical that by watching it, I thought that maybe even I could have played this. But of course, that's nonsense and uh, just me dreaming. So let's see how this went. The game started with d4, knight f6, c4, c5, and now of course white plays d5, taking away c6 from the knight. e6, the modern Bononi, in which black strikes at white center immediately. Knight c3, e takes d5, c takes d5, d6. And in this position, many moves are possible, knight f3, even g3, and bishop f4. But the best move, of course, is e4, occupying the center with a pawn, solidifying d5, allowing this bishop to come out. And as a long-term plan, white wants to get in e5 and unblock his d5 pawn. So e4 is the best move in this position. g6. The dark squared bishop cannot really be developed on this diagonal, so it's best to develop it to g7 where it has a very strong influence down the long diagonal. f4, another logical move. It helps to get in e5, which is white's main plan in this uh, opening. Bishop g7, and now bishop b5. A very good move. Basically forcing the f knight back to d7. Otherwise, white gets in e5 and forces the knight to an inferior position. Both knight bd7 and bishop d7 have been tried before, even at grandmaster level. But white gets a very good game. For example, after knight bd7, white gets in e5, of course. And after pawn takes and f takes e5, this knight has to move. And he can go to e4, he can go to g4. He definitely doesn't want to go home, so the only option left is knight h5. But on h5, the knight doesn't really stand well. White can play knight f3 and he has a good position, but even better is e6 trying to win the spin knight. And after queen h4 check, white has g3. And after knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes rook, white can just simply play bishop e3 defending this knight. And the knight on d7 will be lost. After bishop b5, Black can also try bishop d7, but white gets in e5. And after knight h5, e6 doesn't work here because of bishop takes knight, b takes, and then bishop takes bishop, so black would be winning. But instead of e6, white can just simply play knight f3, and it has a very good game with these two very powerful central pawns. After bishop b5, though, Stockfish played the best knight f d7, and the point is that now the bishop guards e5, so it's impossible to advance the pawn. Lila continued now with a4, a very good move. The point is that if black now plays a6, then white doesn't really want to take out the knight on d7 and help black with his development. So it's best to retreat the bishop to d3, and now the a4 pawn stops the expansion with b5. After a4, b4 now being a hole, Stockfish developed the knight to a6 and is heading to b4. So Stockfish solved the development problems for this knight, but he still has to do it for the other knight and the light squared bishop. The game continued with knight f3, another logical move, helping getting in e5. Knight b4, castles, a6. And now, as I mentioned, taking this knight on d7 is not best and helping black to develop his pieces. So Lila returned the bishop to e2, since d3 is now guarded by the knight. Stockfish now castled and Lila played bishop e3, which is the best place for the bishop, because it guards the d4 g1 diagonal the black bishop maybe could get to at some point. Stockfish now played knight f6, attacking e4, and preparing rook e8 with a double attack on e4 and also d5, because the bishop on e3 is undefended. 
Lila played knight d2 and now on rook e8 she was planning to just retreat the bishop to f2 and all is good. After knight d2 Stockfish played rook b8 planning to expand with b5 which is uh, black's plan in this uh, opening. There aren't many other options. King h1 preparing to retreat the bishop to g1 where it doesn't stand in the rook's way. b5 bishop g1 and now c4 gaining some space and maybe d3 can be used for the knight at some point. a takes b5, a takes b5 and now rook a7. The a file opened up so the rook goes in and is also nicely defended by the bishop on g1. Knight a6 preparing to advance the queenside pawns and now b3. This pawn duo could get very dangerous very quickly so Lila wants to exchange at least one of them and then it's easier to block and attack the other one. b4, knight cb1, c3. This is looking very dangerous but Lila can afford losing the knight on d2 because of bishop a6 and getting the knight there. Bishop takes, rook takes and now rook e8. Now if Lila saves the knight, then e4 falls and uh, black gets counterplay. But Lila is not interested in saving the knight. She got her piece on a6. She just prefers to defend now e4, so she played queen f3. The knight defends e4, and if the pawn takes, then the other knight comes to its place. So e4 is defended. Stockfish played now rook c8 with the idea of playing c2 and maybe promoting on c1 or on b1 by taking the knight. And then if the rook recaptures, then maybe Stockfish could play rook c3 with some counterplay. But Lila doesn't like counterplay, so she played rook c6. And she was expecting queen d7, and after the exchange of the rooks, black maintains the ideas with c2 and promoting. But after rook c6, Stockfish took the rook, and Lila doesn't like this move at all. Her evaluation is now plus 3. After d takes on c6 and queen c7, Lila now played e5. She gives up her e5 pawn to protect the c pawn, which is blocking the queen from protecting c3 and helping maybe with a c2 push. And the c pawn is also more advanced than the e pawn. D takes on e5, and now instead of taking back on e5, Lila just simply takes advantage of the fact that there is a black pawn obstructing the bishop and shatters black's dreams of any counterplay by sacking the knight for the queenside pawns. After knight takes on c3, b takes on c3, and queen takes on c3, the c6 pawn held by the b pawn is just a killer. The f pawn doesn't count. The queenside pawns are rolling. Rook e6. Stockfish obviously tries to get c6 instead of f4, but it's not possible. Rook c1, and now after knight d5, Lila played a very cute queen a1. And the pawn is immune. If rook takes on c6, then after queen a8 check, the rook is lost. So after queen a1, Stockfish played queen c8, and now Lila defended the pawn with queen a4. E takes on f4 and now rook c5 attacking the knight. Lila is optimizing her pieces and then will push the b pawn and that will be it. Knight c7, knight f3, bishop f8, rook c1 and now bishop d6. Stockfish tries to set up a Darsfield blockade so that the c pawn can go past c7. But Lila also has a Darsfield bishop that maybe could help with that. And Lila would like to play now b4, b5 and so on, but she doesn't want this rook to pin her from e4. So instead of b4, she played first queen c4. And now b4, b5 and b6 is obviously coming and it's unstoppable. So Stockfish went for a queen exchange with queen a6. But Lila doesn't mind exchanging the queens because she has a nice tactic to win another piece. After b4, the pawns are threatening to roll in, so Stockfish needs to take the b4 pawn. But no matter how he takes on b4, he won't be guarding c7 adequately, so Lila can push c7. 
Stockfish fend for bishop takes on b4 and after c7 knight takes the rook takes back h6 rook c4 bishop d6 h4 and the game of course is already won Lila just needs to make sure that she will have at least one pawn in the end that can promote to a queen the game continued with king g7 rook a4 king f6 bishop d4 check king e7 bishop g7 h5 bishop h6 going for the black pawns one by one rook e2 bishop g5 check king f8 king g1 bishop c5 king h2 stockfish is trying hard to keep the black king out of the game king g7 bishop takes on f4 one pawn down f6 rook c4 chasing the bishop away from the a7 g1 diagonal so that the king can come out that way bishop a3 king g1 king f7 bishop d2 going for the f6 pawn bishop f8 king f1 rook e6 rook c7 rook e7 rook c6 rook a7 bishop c3 bishop e7 and slowly stockfish has been forced away from active squares and now he has to defend and after some more moves they exchange the darts with bishops and eventually in uh, this position the game was ended in Lila's favor a very very nice game with very human-like moves from start to finish the win seems so effortless, which is the mark of the greatest champions in any kind of sport. Please subscribe, like and share my videos with your friends. Also check out some of the other games. Thanks for watching and see you soon.